hello everybody. Welcome to Radio 5G. This is Michael Dunn with my good friend Nancy Hopkins. Hey there, Nancy. How's it going? Uh, well, we're getting there, aren't we? <laughs> That's all I know. We're we are. There. We are getting here so fast. If only we knew where, <laughs> where, where we're getting there. Yeah, is. Yeah. Right. Right. yeah uh, there's, a, there's a good George Harrison song. Um, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there, right? <laughs> so do we know where we're going? Well, we're getting there very quickly, wherever it is. And, um, you know, we are covering the integration of, of all these concerns that we've been tracking all this time. Uh, we're, we are Radio 5G, and we are still covering the rollout of this deadly millimeter up microwave technology, this weapons and surveillance system masquerading as a fifth generation telecommunications improvement. We're still tracking all that, We're still tracking um, the documented evidence on that horrific consequences to the environment, the acceleration of the sixth extinction event, and of course the documented harm to to children, pregnant women, and all the rest of us as well on multiple levels. But, you know, as we all know, there's there's so much else going on that seems to uh, integrate with it, you know, from, from the pandemic, uh-oh, I used the word pandemic, um, to everything else going on with um, what we are euphemistically referring to as Civil unrest. <laughs> yeah, I had an unrestful night thinking about um, civil unrest. And there's an article uh, by that eminent media organ, the Wall Street Journal, um, focusing on President Trump's recent initiative to uh, – basically limit or um, have an overview in place to halt or suspend the implementation of Chinese technology um, for the 5G rollout, specifically the Huawei technology. That's a Chinese telecom company. And some of us at first were excited about some of the moves that Trump was making to um, suspend the rollout of 5G uh, because of the, the Huawei technology and the, the high likelihood that, that China um, had built in backdoors to the 5G technology they're sharing worldwide, not just in the U.S., that would allow Chinese intelligence to gather whatever they want to gather. So there's that to talk about. And what else are, are you pulling in, Nancy, in terms of what you're looking at these days? Well, let's just talk about this. I mean, we got two hours here. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I put the link in the chat. Okay, great. So let's, um, let's open that up and look at it. Again, this is from Wall Street Journal from um, just a few days ago. And it's Headline, White House considers broad federal intervention to secure 5G future. Subtitle, Trump administration has discussed a range of strategies to build competition against Huawei. And, um, well, let's see, there's a, a uh, YouTube video they've got right as part of this article in the Wall Street Journal, Why the Coronavirus Crisis is Pushing the Desire for 5G. Yeah, it's pushing it all right. Um, so here's what we've got. Trump administration officials have talked about inserting the federal government deep into the private sector to stiffen global competition against Chinese telecom giant Huawei technologies. <clears throat> Excuse me. The idea is discussed intermittently with U.S. tech giants, private equity firms, and veteran telecom executives include prodding large U.S. technology companies like Cisco Systems to acquire European companies, Ericsson or Nokia. Um, so it, it 
if you look at this article, and unfortunately, uh, Wall Street Journal is wanting me to subscribe <laughs> before they're going to give me the rest of the story. Um, previously, this link had provided the whole story, so I'm going to see if I can pull it up elsewhere. But um, I did earlier read. Well, you do, you um, know, because I've, deep- got the, I've got the same problem. They want me to subscribe. Do um, you want me to just play this little video and see what it is? Uh, okay, sure. I mean, it sounds to me, uh, Wall Street Journal's Gerald F. Sabe explains why there's a desire to push forward the rollout of 5G when another economic stimulus package was being discussed among law- lawmakers in April. Okay, so again, they're trying to use the crisis, the coronavirus crisis, to accelerate the rollout of 5G. And the Wall Street Journal, well, we know which side they land on. This is, you know, a corporatist media organ, the corporatist media organ. Um, So 5G is a wonderful thing. It's the coming thing, and you want to invest now. So let's see what they got to say. You want to you want to roll that? Let's let's give it a try. Here we go. Okay. Oh, for heaven's sakes! They're giving us an ad first. Of course. <laughs> okay. It's the journal. It's an IBM. Here's an interesting question that's popped up in the last few days. What's the connection between the coronavirus crisis and the push to build out a big, robust 5G wireless network for the country? Well, here's the step-by-step process that connects those two dots. First of all, there's a desire right now for Washington to produce a big new economic stimulus package. Both House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and President Trump have talked about this in recent days and both want to make part of that package a push to improve America's infrastructure, to create jobs by having projects that improve America's infrastructure. The thinking here is that what Washington has done so far, including the big $2 trillion package recently passed, is mostly an economic rescue, stop the economic bleeding created by the coronavirus slowdown, but that as the year goes on, more will be needed. There will be a need to have an economic stimulus package to get the economy moving again. And with interest rates so low, nobody seems particularly afraid about issuing more government debt to pay for that infrastructure project. Secondly, at the same time, there's a desire to build out the 5G network because what has happened in America during the coronavirus crunch is that the country has moved online in a bigger way. You now have more people working from home online. You have students learning from home online. You have more telemedicine being practiced. And there's probably no turning back the clock on any of those trends now. And third, there's a desire not to fall behind China and not to be dependent on China for this new need for a 5G network. Uh, You know, Americans were concerned in the coronavirus crisis to learn we were more dependent than they thought on China for both medicines and medical equipment. Nobody wants to be in that position when the 5G push begins in earnest. And that includes not being dependent on Huawei, the big Chinese tech company for 5G equipment. So there's a desire to make America the 5G country on its own. So put those all together and you have a push for a big new infrastructure package and a growing desire to see a 5G effort by the federal government as part of that package. Conservatives. Okay, sorry about the delay. (laughs) Oh, Eric starts it up again. Jeez. See, once once they, they, (laughs) they have a life of their own, you know what I'm saying? They do. Don't they? It's Uh, artificial intelligence at work. Not to worry. The Internet of Things will soon necessitate that you won't have to worry about any of these things or, you know, your your uh, baby's diet. Okay. The the problem with all of this is that, you know, I don't know what's in – we don't know because we have to subscribe. Uh, What they're saying inside the – you know, there might be more. But based on that little clip, um, 5G is this (laughs) – you know this this term that it, they they use, but and it's you know I mean it's the third generation, fourth generation, fifth generation. No, it isn't. Fifth five G refers to a whole series of things that even I am not sure of what it's all covering. You know what I'm saying? In other words, five G. What is it? Well, the upgrade, the actual upgrade to a 
from a 4G to a 5G system would be fiber, fiber optics. And fiber optics is, in some cases, already in. They just are not using it because it's not cost effective for the telecommunications companies. Once they're in, you don't have to put, put all the money into maintenance that you charge, you know, three to four or five times more than what it's costing you so you can make a profit. Okay, that's the reason they don't want 5G if you're just talking telecommunications. Well, hold on. Let me, let me understand because it says something. It's not cost effective. You said that fiber optic, they, even though it's started to be rolled out, it's not cost effective. Uh, yeah, compared it, to millimeter microwave radiation? No, it is. It, it's not. It, no. Fiber optics is not cost effective to the telecommunications companies because once you put a fiber optics in, then that doesn't need the maintenance that you need on these big towers and cell, you know, the cell towers and all this other stuff. You don't need all of these antenna systems all over the place. It's tele, you know, it's fiber optics. It's going over a landline, essentially, instead of through the air. So, so it is cost effective. I mean, it's, it's, co- it's, it's cost effective. Well, it's well, it's cost effective for you and I, <laughs> you know, and the governments that have already paid for it. Do you remember back when you'd get a telephone bill and it would have, uh, you know, we're, we're taking money from you to build new. And it was all specifically so that they were going to build out the fiber optics. This was a very, you know, maybe, I don't know, five years ago, let's say. Okay, so you're talking fiber optics were actually, we were paying for it. That was, you know, because if you, if you, why, what are you talking about? Well, we need to build out this fiber optics, so you have to help us pay for it which was really stupid of the governments to begin with, but that's what they did. And then the governments, you know, put the put the taxing on us, the, what do they call them, fees. So, and this is, right. you know, I mean, there's been, well, who was it? We had, we did a show on this. Uh, and, you know, there's law cases about it because you spent all this money to put this fiber optics and then you never tied it into the system. And it's because the telecommunications companies, you know, we're just, if we were just talking communications, okay, they make an awful lot of money on the maintenance of the equipment because when you put up an antenna system, not only are you going to pay for the antenna system, okay, the government, the, gov- the local governments actually end up doing a lot of the payment for this build-out, okay, um, but you're also going to have to pay for the maintenance of these things. This is the this is what is so insane about the telecommunications companies is they make a tremendous amount of money, but we pay for to build it, and we get nothing back from it. Oh, except better service, maybe you know. But yeah, it, it's a real screwed up business thing. I mean, you need somebody like Trump, a true business person that can say, "Wait a minute," you know, working for 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 us. Who says you know this doesn't make any sense? So th- that 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 <clears throat> that happened that you know they were going to build out the fi- the fiber optics. If they had built out the fiber optics, you, um, you could have at least five G equi- whatever they're talking that's five G equivalent. You would have that ability. You would also have the safety of it because you don't get electromagnetic fields that are damaging off of fiber optics. Um, well, exactly. So you know, I mean, it, 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 to, to, when 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 you hear them talking about five G, you know, if they're talking about a new tech, not a new technology, but an upgrade to the system into fiber optics, okay, then hey, I'm with the president and anybody else who wants to build that system. But if you're talking about five G the way that Mark Steele and I understand it and what's in it. And a lot of other people now, okay? I mean, it wasn't just me and Mark. It was a lot of other people that said, you put this stuff into the air, you're killing everything. Okay? Well, that's the point. They're killing everything. Because you have a dark agenda trying to put up an electromagnetic fencing system that will not only control us, but control the population numbers. You know, they can control... Right, which is why... Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, 
which is why, of course, as you say, now they're tossing around the, the term 5G, um, you know, just meaning, oh, the great new future of, you know, from fourth generation, we're on to fifth generation without um, using it specifically to name the technology of, you know, millimeter microwave radiation. Um, it's just, it's, you know, just broadly being um, touted and promoted and marketed as the great fast new thing, you know, um, and it's being blurred, you know, it's here in Colorado, Southern Colorado, it's a sparsely populated region. It does not make economic sense to be putting up small cell towers for actual millimeter microwave technology every, you know, two to three hundred yards out here in the San Luis Valley, which is one of the most sparsely populated areas in America, right? You're not, that's just, they're, you're not going to do that. But it is true that the nearest decent sized city, Alamosa, an hour away from here, they do have 5G. And the components that are getting put into the houses out here in the San Luis Valley, where, you know, you can see to the horizon, uh, and it's a really long, big horizon, and not see a single house, but new components, it was like, oh, this is 5G capable. This new uh, thing we're putting, uh, you know, up in your your attic room for your wire for your Wi-Fi. Hey, not to worry, it's 5G capable. And when you you know fire up your cell phone or you look at your laptop and what's my Wi-Fi network, you know it'll show you the 5G version of it. Now, is it in fact 5G? It's 5G capable, and I'm I'm talking to you from uh, a house that is pretty far out on the, the, what we call the plain here uh, in the high valley, 8,000 feet altitude. And, uh, you know, the nearest house is a few hundred yards away. And the nearest house to that one's another few hundred yards away. And yet all of our components, you know, it says 5G capable. And, and this is a pretty geopolitically awake community out here. And, you know, we've founded a, a group, you know, keep Crestone 5G free. And, you know, there's awareness, but, you know, there's a conservative faction who goes, well, I don't know, you know, I mean, we, we all want to support, you know, things that help business. And we all want to support, uh, you know, it, it tends to be the keep your head down, don't question uh, big brother kind of thing. Uh, so, it's just a really interesting moment right now because all the focus is on the pandemic and the riots and under cover of that, let's not only under cover of that, let's use that. Oh, we've got a coronavirus epidemic. We better roll out 5G even faster because we need an infrastructure uh, stimulus. And, you know, what could be more important than that? Because we're all sitting at home using more bandwidth to talk to each other. It's like, uh huh. And how's that going? Is there some crying need where everybody's saying, Oh, I can't go online? No. You know, it's like, Oh, I need an Internet of Things. I absolutely have to have my baby's diapers equipped with a Wi Fi uh, unit that's going to communicate to my laptop and tell me when he's wet his pants um, while irradiating the kid and damaging uh, his DNA and all future generations. Yeah, let's roll. Yeah, the, oh, we absolutely must do that because Dr. Fauci tells us there's a hundred thousand new cases this week. I remain a, a little suspicious and even more suspicious. You know the way they're. I mean, this ad we just listened to in the Wall Street Journal. You know, it just seems it, just the assumption. Of course, this just makes so much sense. I mean, let's face it, folks. Got this second stimulus package they're working on, and well, it just kind of came and went, and now we need something else, and we just really ought to accelerate this 5G rollout. That's the answer. I mean, it is to me, it's just so bald faced BS, you know, the rationalization of it. Uh, is it just me? I mean, did it, how did it sound to you? Well, it, in, you know, it, it's the two realities. Because there's at least two realities in play right now. Um, there's a 
a medium psychic out there, Gustavo, who's, you know, the reason I, I tend to think that she might be real is because she was being targeted by YouTube. She, she she put up. I think I saw this, you know, and they would have her down in a in a heartbeat. And she's just claiming to be a psychic medium who's saying things like, you know, the bushes are all dead, <laughs> you know, and things like that. And yes, but she's saying she's a psychic. She's not saying she's got proof of it. She's saying she's a psychic, and boom, they take her down. Um. So oh, yeah, that's. That's interesting. I'm sorry, go ahead. So, you know, that's why I started paying attention to her. And in all, in all honesty, a lot of what she says, and now she's she's got she's, she's so famous now, and she's from Germany. She's so famous now that I don't see her getting taken down, but I think she's probably getting smarter, too, that she's not saying things that we know, you know, certain words will tweak the system. But... A lot of what she is actually saying, um, I already know because I'm a fairly good researcher and I, I've already found out the information. So she could be an excellent researcher and be finding out the information. But then she goes out on a limb and she says things that um, without any backup, you know, in the real world, that um, are interesting. Let me put it to you that way. And her attitude is that there are everything that I've been telling you, you know, is in fact happening behind the scenes. So the narrative of us even discussing what they might plan for 5G is really we're just we're just talking about right now and what we're seeing. We're not talking about the potentials. And the potentials are absolutely mind mind boggling. Okay, and what I'm talking yeah. about is that if if there are two reactions, she's confirming that there's she's saying there's actually three uh, timelines. Um, was it her or I'm trying to think now? But the, the, somebody just recently confirmed that the timeline concept. You know that we don't have all of these amazing timelines like we used to work with it's all come down to like I, I tell people it's like a it's like three ropes or you know where you got the ropes are made from you know small pieces of uh, thin pieces of rope that's tied wrapped around each other and you've got a timeline and the timeline has different little teeny versions depending on which of the little line the little well, strings the little strings that might be making up this big rope and so you do have a lot of variety, but within these two, these three, you know, we, you mentioned path, you know, well, any path will get you where you're going if you don't know where you're going. And that's what we're, that's what we're hap is happening. It, they, but the key is, is it, it, what happens is what is decided by the majority of people. I, you yeah, know, I like the consciousness thing. Right, exactly. And so, Right now, there the, there's a timeline that says, oh, they're going to get the 5G and they're going to control us. We're going to have uh, transhumanisms. They're going to be robots all over the place. And you want to let, let's just you know let's just play games here for a second. I have a new show um, up on Cosmic Reality Radio, and it's um, by uh, Bobby Bobby Vaughn was on last yesterday. Is his uh, uh, partner Kimberly Schultz was not. Uh, it's called a call to actions, plural. And he was discussing uh, the w world of robotics. And uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, if you want to, if you want to go into reality sci-fi, that show was like intense because there he went into the whole. And, and this is all documented. He went into a whole discussion about. You know, this company in Boston, something or other, that's owned by so and so. He's got the, you know, he knows who owns these companies and everything. And this is what they're doing. And they have a whole program of bringing out a series of, let's say, it, it, well, it starts out as sort of robots. And the first thing is this new dog they got out there. Have you heard about this new dog? 
No. You can, you can actually, they've got the pricing down so you can actually afford a robotic dog. Great. Okay. Um, uh. <laughs> you know, as a matter of fact, you've seen some of these robotic dogs out in the parks telling people to get away from each other. The social distancing, have you seen oh, some, yeah, some of that? Oh, yeah, yeah, like in uh, uh, Singapore. You go exa- to the store in Singapore and it's like, please stand back from the person six feet from you in the bread section. Please yeah. stand back from, but you know, jeezel, <laughs> bezel. Okay, so this, I don't know that these are talking dogs, these these ones that they're selling to people, um, but they're actually, that's why, that's why these governments can afford these dogs now because they're actually, you know, trying to get them out there to sell to everybody else. Oh, good Lord. Um, yeah, anyway. they, you have to walk them and they don't poop on your carpets, no doubt, right? <laughs> it's it's so freaky stupid. Um, but it, they're, they're um, you know, it's all, oh, it's this massive mind game that they're playing. Okay, so what they're going to do, let me see if I can remember this. The first stage is that you have a robotic body that your mind is controlling remotely. So it's like the avatar concept, okay, where you're right. sitting you're sitting at a computer and the robot's working, right? Now, I'm assuming that those particular units have live people doing the remote controlling just by thinking. They're not using any mechanical means, they're thinking and there's a link between their thoughts and this robot. This is the way I'm understanding it, right? Okay, okay. so Okay, so the second the second stage is that they're going to actually take <laughs> I know this sounds insane, but, but he, he does a better job of it because he's reading what they're saying, right? But then they take the next stage is to actually take your. It's weird. He's giving me some photos. A call to action right now is that was that blip blip. He's dropping photos in my <laughs> Skype. Okay, but um, oh, so I might be have some photos of this stuff. Okay. Um, so, the second stage is that they're going to take your brain or head <laughs> and put it in the robot. Okay? Now, uh-huh. we, we're, we're laughing, right? But they have already taken. But and you they're, can they're, take my brain or my head. Which do I want you to take? W- hmm. well, Don't well, take they, the well, head. They, they, the- they, they want to get to the point where they can just take your brain. You know, but if they have to take your whole friggin' head, then they'll do it. Um, but the, they've got a chimpanzee whose head was put on the body of another chimpanzee, and they are bragging about it. <laughs> All right. So yeah. <laughs> okay. So so that's that's the second stage. Now the third stage is uh, well. This in the second stage, um, it, it's a link between the brain and the mechanics of a robot. And then in the third stage, they are actually going to tie in a, a neurological system, probably fiber optics, so that you don't have to have a, it's not mechanical as much as it is not biological, but working like a biological machine. Um, and then they, what, what the heck is it? Oh, I mean, and, 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 and they're, he, I don't know. He was. He goes off and he says, and he's saying, now, he said, let's let's understand that they're they're telling us, and it's in the article that you know these things are going to be able to fight wars, <laughs> you know, and he okay. so he goes off on it, and he's like, well, you know, let's think about this. You got a bunch of people that are sitting someplace with, you know, controlling remotely these killing machines to kill other people. Oh, that doesn't sound really good. But you, you know, you're safe. You're still back home, right? And then he right, gets he, doing then, that with drones anyway. But yeah. And then he gets into this crazy story about well, what if it's only the heads? <laughs> you know, and where are they getting these heads? You know, I the mean, the guillotines lined up all over America. There you go, guillotine re- system. It's really something to 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 yep. listen to him, you know. But in my opinion, the, you know, this guy and the, I've been fighting these people that are talking about this transhumanism and Borgs. I'm, I'm terrified of Borgs. You know, the Star Trek Borg character. Um, uh, I, I would oh, yes. walk. 
Huh? Yes, resistance is futile. Exactly. It was like I've I've been a devotee of theirs forever, and they start this Borg thing, and I actually think I turned it off in the middle of the episode because it I was so that. distressing I, I to me. Yeah. You know, and I I think that that's because on a very super, let's say, cosmic subconscious, we know that the great enemy is AI. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, you know, when I think about that, um, and we try to help, we we want people to understand, look, we're not anti-technology, we're not anti-internet, we're not a bunch of Luddites wanting to go back to, you know, horses and carts and snail mail. You know, um, fiber optic is the safe, faster, effective, non-toxic, non-deadly, not a surveillance and weapon system route to go, you know, which is where we were going, right? But when you get into into AI, I think, you know, what you're saying here, Nancy, is that, you know, the great enemy. When you look at it and when you think about the concept of evil, of Satan, of the opposing force – you know, it's that which wants us to forget that the hidden unity of the soul with spirit wants us to buy into the separation, wants us to buy into the notion of, hey, you've got to get yours and maybe you get yours for you and your family or your group or your culture, but it's about domination exploitation and control of others for your personal gratification and the survival of your bloodline. You know, it's like for the Game of Thrones fans out there, again and again, the storylines of Game of Thrones comes down to some morally ambiguous character like Jamie Lannister stands up, you know, up at Winterfell in one of the final episodes of the last season. And yeah, okay. I pushed the 10-year-old out of the tower. Okay, I did that. I did some other bad things. But what I did, I did for my house and my family, and I would do it again, right? So it's this this orientation, um, you know, and nature exists for you to manipulate and dominate and control um, for the advantage of you, your bloodline, your family, because it's Darwinian, it is survival of the fittest, and that's the evolutionary fact. And, you know, all you sweet spiritual hippie kids out there, well, you're going to be left in the dust of the evolutionary trajectory because AI and the mingling of the human being, the the blending of AI, the creation of, you know, super soldiers, of, of you know, super beings, AI-capable, blended human beings and AI, you know, that's the inevitable wave of the future, and you're just toast. And you're, you know, just sad, pathetic remnants of a uh, uh, of a lovey-dovey, touchy-feely, new-age, spiritual, you know, wannabe world. Well, that's a big lie. <laughs> it's a really, really, really big lie um, because there, there actually is – uh, this thing called consciousness, and there actually is the, the survival of consciousness that survives the passing of the human body. There actually is the divine realm. There actually is the reality of of the the quantum realm. There actually is the reality of the shungite field. There actually is the reality that, and they know it. You know, at the higher levels of the dark faction, they know dark metaphysics. They don't have a visceral understanding of the futility of their of their pathway you know because it leads ultimately to mutual betrayal mutual destruction these these systems eventually break down but it's like hey I don't care in the meantime I get my jollies uh you know I get my my gratification my domination yeah there may be this thing called god there may be this thing called destiny of souls but in the meantime kids you know take your biochip take your vaccine uh because you know, we're controlling the government, we're controlling all uh, of the powers that be, and we are now creating a crisis in order to force your cooperation. You know, the, this is the the great struggle when you're talking, when you're saying, Nancy, this, that AI is the great enemy. Yeah, it is 666. What was that 
numerology about? It's about the human making itself divine. You know, that the numerological significance of that. It's like saying, look, we are here to just contravene, manipulate, and in fact, destroy the divine nature, the divine plan. And this is where it comes back to timelines. I'd love to, you know, get back on the timeline track we were discussing because, you know, if you're listening to this program, you're going, holy crap, this is bleak, man, this is depressing. Well, if enough people on the planet start to buy into the bleak and depressing, inevitable triumph of AI, guess what? The collective consciousness buys into it and the dark fashion goes, yay, we've got them going down the box canyon timeline, the dead end canyon timeline. We have moved the spiritual hope thing out of the field of play and now we've got them where we want them. So, you know, that's where the real battle is. I mean, I, I, I think I talked about this with Gary Cassidy back in Project Camelot a year or so ago. What's really going on is a battle of timelines. It, it's a timeline war. And that's that's a, a war for the minds and hearts of humanity. And it's a war between hope and fear. And so... Well, it's interesting um, you said minds and hearts of humanity. You see, I I see it Okay, if I t- step into the to the role of, you know, uh, a neurologist, which is somebody that works with the concepts of quantum physics and somebody that works with metaphysics, it comes down to silicon, uh, silicone, but versus carbon. Are we going to have a carbon-based life force, or are we going to have a silicon-based life force? Is it going to be organic? Or is it going to be not organic? It's uh, if you want to put a, in meta or in you know metaphysical religious connotations, are you for God, carbon, or are you for Lucifer, silica? Right, and yeah, and and there's a, a friend of mine. A shout out to Rob Williams, who put it this way. He said, "Okay, everybody's talking about." AI and the fear of it. And there is OI, which is organic intelligence. And that is carbon-based, as you say, right? And that what can happen, the timeline that we are promoting and encouraging is for organic intelligence to integrate AI in service to humanity by guidance from di divine intelligence that's you know that is the freedom timeline it's the restoration and healing timeline where you know organic human intelligence with the guidance of divine intelligence integrates ai in the service of humanity um you know not to create transhumanism um but for the true spiritual upliftment, ascension, you know, evolution um, into our our native freedom and a, awareness of our soul connection to God. Well, it goes back to Star Trek, you know. Of course. Okay, because because do you do you remember when Data was put on trial to to, to figure out if he was a sentient being or not? Oh, Data. Yeah, Data. Um, that was one of the most profound episodes I've ever seen of anything. You mm. know, what what connotates a sentient being? You know, and they had all these different definitions of it and, you know, um that 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 we would like to have that problem, you know. And you've got that timeline of Star Trek and data 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 Data. Data. Um, and you have the other timeline of the Borg. Resistance is futile. Right. Okay. So you've got the stark description, you know, ex- examples of the two timelines. One, the Borg high mind, nobody's separate, you know, and then you have, but this is, this is, you know, human beings with, with the robotic things in them. Okay, I mean, and it doesn't take, I mean, 
in some cases you didn't know what was human or what wasn't you know but again it's using the brain the you know of a human being in order to create this you know combination of robot and uh right. you know, human to to work as a hive to create exactly the the you know what you were talking about control capture you know us versus it, it okay so you go well what kind of what, what is behind somebody that doesn't have any consideration for anybody except his family or his clan you know whoever he identifies as being the elite okay what, right. what, what what's the difference well those people do not feel compassion they are not in fact they can't feel what it is you know they're not impasse they can't feel you know what's what you're doing to somebody and they're sociopaths because they really don't give a crap about anybody and when you get down to it they're totally so psycho- psychopathic okay right and these yeah, are these yeah. are really sick people <laughs> right but the key to it is okay so what is it about the other timeline the timeline where those people are not in control and what you have there is you have yeah. compassion empathy gratitude appreciation none of that is on the other timeline okay you don't have that yeah. you know and when you take those four factors and you put an over cover statement as to what they are that's love that that makes up love exactly okay so yeah you know you got you got this this loving being that you know is just like and, and you can see them you see them in in, in your own lives you see them di- displayed i mean portrayed as in, in many many different ways but you've got these people that just are loving caring never hurt anybody um, and fun people, you know, running around essentially without a purpose other than let's have fun and be good to each other. Okay? Mm-hmm. And then you've got this this other God that's like, oh, you're just a waste of space. You know? Why right. don't you go out and conquer and you know, do all these bad things? Because that's that's that universe. You know? And so... You know, they get together and they and God says, our God, organic God says, oh, I, you know, these this is the way you should live, loving. What's this loving stuff? Waste of time. What is, you know, they don't because they don't have it. So yeah, and it's <clears throat> and Lucifer. Ahead. Lucifer says, you know, I can control your people. It wouldn't take anything to control your people, right? And God says, well, go for it. Now, I've been a little pissed off at God for a long time about that. You know, why did you send them to Earth? <laughs> you know, but here, uh, we are, here we are on Earth now, a 3D game board of a holographic universe, you know, that is God, our God's creation of fun and love and Garden of Eden and all these animals and, you know, anything you need and, you know, just... You know, and then you got, you know, this 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 other Lucifer that wants to be able to prove that he's superior because he he has to he has to he's psychopathic he has to prove he's the best, right? So mm. you got you got that person coming in. All right, now where does where does the where does it happen? Well, it happens when um, the okay God puts him in the in the garden and he makes you know yeah Adam and then he makes Eve and, and he says um, okay. Uh, the only thing you, I'm going to pr- pr- tell you, don't do is take from the tree of knowledge. Do not eat from the tree from the fruit of knowledge. Okay, so then he comes along and she says, "Oh, look at that lovely little apple," and then she sees the serpent, and the serpent says, "It's very delicious." Oh no, God said we shouldn't eat of that. But it is pretty, isn't it? I bet it tastes good. No, 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 no. God told you that. Because if you eat from the tree of knowledge, then you are going to be as a God. 
Okay, look it up in the Bible. What did she say? What did he say to her? You know? So right. she eats from the tree of knowledge. Adam eats from the tree of knowledge. All of a sudden, they realize they're naked. God says, you ate from the tree of knowledge, you fools. I told you not to. Well, now you're condemned to go out there and live the, you know, go out and figure out what to do now. You know? He said, uh, you, now you have to live the live life, essentially. Okay? You could have stayed here. Now you got to go play this game because you wanted knowledge. Go for it. Go for it. So he throws us out into this place, <laughs> you know. And now we got to fend for ourselves. We we chose chose knowledge over love. And knowledge will take you down a very 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 long, long journey until you understand why love is preferable to knowledge. And that's where we're at today. Right, or integration. Or, you know, I could say, you know, the integration of, of love and knowledge. I mean, the, like, organic intelligence saying, okay, AI exists, and let's make it the servant of freedom. Let's make it the servant of healing. You know, let's prevent it from becoming a tool of, of domination, exploitation, and, you know, the warping of the divine design into something that's going to work for one elite faction or another. You know, you're talking about Star Trek. It's a very interesting thing about Star Trek. Back to the very beginnings of it, you know, to William Shatner and, you know, Spock and everything from the very beginnings, you know, back in the 60s. And you trace forward the, the universe that that series exists in, that all those stories, <clears throat> when you get to really profound, interesting, intriguing, fascinating questions like the Borg and data and, you know, the meaning of what does it mean to be human and can a Borg be human and does he have desires and what are those, all this stuff, right? Never in any Star Trek episode, I challenge you to find it, whether it's the original or Next Generation or Deep Space Nine or any of the movies, spiritual reality, the survival of consciousness when the body dies, the reality of, of the soul is never, not once acknowledged or validated. They'll bring it up. They'll toy with it. It's like, oh, gosh, here I am. I'm talking to the soul of my father, the spirit of my father. Has said, well, it turns out that it's actually, you know, it was built in as a program, and your father's memory was downloaded into the uh, computer, and now as a holographic reality, uh, he is projecting to be able to talk to you because it's all just, in the end, microchips. Voyager. There, you know, <laughs> was Voyager, Voyager, whatever, yeah. Jane, it was Jane. Uh, there, Captain Jane. Oh, with Jane, right. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, there is... It's just a really interesting thing because it's an all-pervasive cultural thing, Star Trek, right? Interesting thing about Star Wars is that they bring in the Force. They bring in, you know, what, you know, Yoda says to Luke, you know, it says, you know, luminous beings are we, not this crude matter, right? And there's this survival. There is, you know, the Force ghost, there's spirit, there, you know, there's an implied... Um, spiritual consciousness, reality. And, um, you know, when, when we're talking about what happens when you go for um, the great enemy as your ruling paradigm, you go for self-interest as opposed to service to, to the good of all. That's the basic dividing line, you know. And it, when you go for that, you can see there is, you know, a, a gradual moral decay that sets in which ultimately leads to the breakdown of the service to self system because service to self my bloodline my family my house my group my lead faction yeah but loyalty is not a value and ultimately they turn against each other Ultimately, they're fighting each other because they believe in separation. They believe in the primacy of self-gratification as the purpose of life. And even you, know, you see it in Game of Thrones, right? Jamie, he's standing with his, his sister, Cersei, and they're this weird, strange, incestuous pair. And there's nobody in the world closer to them 
than each other. And yet she's on the verge of having a big monster warrior, you know, disembowel him right in front of her because she's constantly suspicious of betrayal. And that is the that is just a theme. And it's what we're seeing now. You know, part of the reason that there's this chaotic attempt to impose this electronic grid to lock down humanity is because they're scared crapless. You know, they're fighting each other. The light is popping up all over the place. It's like, we got to clamp this down now or we are done for. And the result of it is that more people are waking up. It's, they're doing it clumsily and chaotically, and it's becoming obvious, and they're being exposed. The pedophile rings are being exposed. You know, the infiltrators are being exposed. Um, the media, you know, the corporate media BS, uh, how they are just servants of the elite, is being exposed. And it's a scary time, but it's like Princess Leia says in one of the opening scenes, you know, you know, the more you tighten your grip, Governor Tark, the more star systems will slip through your fingers, right? That's essentially what's happening here. And it's, geez, it's a scary time, but, you know, it's a timeline war. And, and if we can just, yeah, here on Radio 5G and Cosmic Reality, you know, we are putting forward this story. And you, and you said one time, Nancy, you, you were talking about how, okay, how many hundreds of listeners do we have? You know, Carrie Cassidy, Project Camel, it's got a few hundred thousand. You know, David Wilcox doing his Ascension Academy thing, and he's got all kinds of viewers. This message, you know, what, what you put out in Cosmic Reality all the time, you told me this, that you sense the presence of the guides. You know there's a transdimensional reality that is allied with you. There is the Shungite field that you are allied with. There is the reality of Gaia, right? And that the ripple effect of this message just seeding the field of human consciousness, even with, you know, the comparatively small audience that we've got here, um, those ripples are going out across the surface of Gaia and into the heart of Gaia and her children. So I believe, and you could say maybe that's just a pretty story, but I think it's it's why we're still talking here. That 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 yes, absolutely. It's um, again, it goes back to the rules of cosmic reality. Reality is what we think it is, and the second rule is majority wins. But it doesn't mean how many people, number wise, are thinking about a given reality. It's about the understanding of that given reality and how much power of thought people are putting into it. So, yeah. you, 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 you know, you could take 10% of the humanity that's thinking, you know, and they're thinking about one thing, you know, creating a reality of the golden rule. The others aren't thinking. Mm. They're not putting in. They're just going along. They, you know, they're not activated. But you get you get people who are absolutely in tune with their higher self. They know that it, there's not a thing that in the universe that they can't ask a question about. That in some way or another they will get the answer. That they are co-creators because you know the sum total of us thinking, being loving people, is our God. And so it it is it, it's it's a fine tuning between the individual bee and the beehive. Mm-hmm. Um, and in both cases, you know, if you if you suddenly had had individual think thinking in the, the Borg, and they've done stories about this that they break away from the Borg, you know, because they still got that hum, humanity in them. Right, and, you know, so so if you've got that piece of of humanity in a machine, at any given time, that humanity can turn on and turn against you. Right um, now, okay, you know, the, we, the I've been at this for for so long, and I've seen the reason I can tell the stories I tell is because I have seen them continually come to pass to be confirmed 
I mean, is the okay to give you the to give you an example. I do not know of another human being on the face of the earth that realized, well, you know, that was out there and doing a thing, the, you know, the dark side knew, the amount of black ceremonial magic associated with the Nazi regime. There were uh-huh. other people, but I was able to get very deep into what was happening and to then write about it. I mean, I think other people did, but nobody was writing about it. And this yeah. was way back in the 70s. Okay, now everybody knows about this. But let's let's just look at that again. You're talking about a group of people who came together practicing ceremonial black magic in the black being control, power. Okay, and I mean that. That think about it. Most people wouldn't even grasp that. When I first started talking about it, people were. I was afraid to talk about it because I thought, well, they're really going to think I'm crazy. But I said I can write about it, so I wrote about it. But I didn't talk about it much because it was just so bizarre. You're telling me that six million people died because somebody was practicing black magic? Yes. Uh, that that's mm. what that yeah. game was about, and now you can find go over read the sands of time. You know, begin to understand the full, unbelievable uh, attitude that these people had about themselves. They thought that they deserved to control everything. I don't know why they want to do this, but that's what they are. They're psychopaths, sociopaths, and really bad people. Okay, so they get into uh, ceremonial magic. Now, what's ceremonial magic? Ceremonial magic is the manipulation of energy. Magic is the manipulation of energy. Ceremonial magic is that you use a repetitive uh, sequence of incantations, being voice, being sound, being sound energy that we know can heal. And it can also absolutely destroy you. Sound is a powerful energy force. So you have these incantations where the voice and the bodies and they get into, you know, really, really powerful manifestations of energy in the words that they're they're chanting. Never mind what they got in their minds. You know, so yeah. when you when you begin to understand the power of magic in that magic is the manipulation of energy. It's the manipulation of all energy, and specifically the human voice, because we know from Russian studies that the human voice will change your DNA faster than anything else. Yeah, I mean, I I know a guy, um, I know pretty well, actually, who went through FSB Academy, successor organization to the KGB, and he told me about how, well, there is a certain frequency that I was trained to incorporate into my voice to, um, you know, to, to mentally, psychically dominate the person I'm using it on. And I think about um, the autobiography of a yogi, you know, the famous spiritual classic by Paramahansa Yogananda, uh, published back in 1946. He talks about growing up in India and his own sp- awareness, intuitive awareness from past lives of the power of the voice. And when he's like 12 years old, he says, I'm on the porch and I'm, I'm with my sister and she had a, a big um, boil on her arm, you know, and she was putting some salve on it to, to um, cure it, to heal it, to make it go away. And so there's her brother, Mukunda, as he was then called, um, who takes some of her salve And he's putting it on his arm, but he doesn't have any boil. And she says, you know, stupid little brother, why are you putting salve on a healthy arm? And he says, well, I'm I'm putting it here for the boil that I'm going to have tomorrow. And he says, you know, you're not going to have a boil tomorrow. Why are you you talking this nonsense? And, And he tells this story in the autobiography. He says, I turned to her and with great concentration in my voice, I said to her, sister, 
I, by the power of will in me, I tell you that I will have a boil in this exact spot on my arm tomorrow, and your boil will have increased to twice its size. And the next morning, sure enough, his sister's boil is twice the size, and he's got a boil exactly in the same spot on his arm as he put the salve. His sister runs runs away to their mother and says, Mother, Mukunda is becoming a necromancer. And the mother is a great soul, and she just comes to him and says, Mukunda, never again use the divine power of the voice to do harm. And he never did. But, you know, that's one of the great spiritual teachers of the 20th century, right there in his life story, just laying it out. You know, don't forget, people, there's this divine power. So um, speaking of sound and radio, it's 11 o'clock. Time for a break on Radio 5G, right? And we're back. And I've got thunder. I've got thunder. You've got got thunder in the background down there in Florida? (laughs) Yeah, if you hear it. I don't know if you hear it or not. Dog's all freaked out. I had to go get him some, what is it, cannabis oil. <laughs> yeah, he gets so freaked out I over the... See. Huh? Get your robot AI dog, you won't have to worry about stuff well, like that. Well, that's probably true, yeah. But I can't imagine hugging, you know, a robot like I can hug a furry boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know what you mean. I, I, I had a friend who was a maintenance guy, and he had an apartment in the complex... Beautiful view, and on the little patio outside his door, his little apartment, he had this cat. And uh, he said, hey, Mike, I want you to meet my you know, pet cat, Fluffy. I said, Bill, um, Fluffy is made of stone. He said, yeah, I know. It's just really convenient. You know, she doesn't poop in the house. You know, I don't have to deal with hairballs. I can just come out and say, hey, Fluffy, good morning. How you doing? You know, don't get up on my account, and it's very convenient. <laughs> so I think, you know, yeah, robot dog is probably going to tell you, uh, you know, to get out of the way and social distance because you're six feet away from your spouse or whatever. Well, well, oh, I, d- I do, I do have, I do have uh, an idea for what they should do with those dogs. I think yeah. they, I think they should use them for crowd control. <laughs> Oh yeah, there you go, man. You I know, learned from one. You know, instead of instead of this voice saying "keep your distance," you know, <laughs> crowd control. Right. Well, it's like mounted police officers. They still use them, right? Because a a man on a horse, you know, is an intimidating thing, and they're still very effective mounted police. You know, in, in crowd control, I'd, I'd much rather have a mounted policeman. Uh, at least, you know, a good, trustworthy law enforcement officer of the good kind, of whom there are many, uh, as opposed to some dog, electric dog, you know, growling at you, who's probably equipped to zap you, you know, with with some uh, electric bolt if uh, his programming tells you he's entitled to make you step back another foot or two. God forbid. Dark timeline. Box Canyon. Timeline of bleak despair. Don't go there, folks. <laughs> okay. The future is bright. So, so another timeline. The timeline that you know uh, we talk. We were talking about the two realities. You know the and for practical purposes, the AI reality and the you know the reality that we're on now. Uh, at least I am. You know the the going back to source or spirituality but I'm mean, at least getting to the, to the reality of the golden rule you know I don't know yeah. what it's all going to become I don't think any of us do but you know that timeline then there's a middle timeline and that middle timeline is a combination of the two you know and that's the one that we're kind of like in right now you know it's the timeline yeah. of decision you got to go one way or the other way. But this is the timeline of decision. Now, I would have argued a little bit ago that we there were uh, there were three timelines, but the, the third timeline was one of ascension. Oh, we're just going to go into this wonderful place and we're going to go. Well, I, I, I don't hear that, that talk too much anymore. Maybe I'm not looking at it. But... Um, 
that's just uh, I, I don't I don't see any energy in it or very little energy into it. It's just okay. Not, let me let me understand. Can you paint that a little more specifically about what? Oh, we're going to all we're, we're going into the fifth dimension. You know, and uh-huh. that we're all going to be you know, and that we're going to leave the third dimension. I don't think we're finished with the third dimension. You know, until we can get back to a Garden of Eden kind of concept, you know, where where we understand, you know, love and, and joy, and that's what we should be, not this other stuff. But we don't have to okay. do that. You know what I'm saying? But then you got yeah. that those people that just think that, oh, no, we're going to become these light beings. Well, you become a light being when you die. You do that all the time. <laughs> you know, this well, is, this is... Yeah, this is a really interesting question to me because the the reality that I'm hearing about, and and you know, I have the same uh, dilemma around this that you're describing. You know, because I, I, yeah, obviously, you know, I've been practicing this, you know, a spiritual path as best I can for a lot of years. Um, you know, obviously, I'm what you might call a metaphysical guy. Obviously, than you know, more so than a lot of folks. And yet I'm, you know, I also am very grounded in 3D. You know, I'm a sacred activist, spent a lot of years working on a movement to create a new international court of human rights and, you know, restore the rule of law to have, to end impunity by the dark faction. You know, that's that's a very 3D thing. And yet we've got this whole, you know, ascension concept, the ascension timeline, 5D, um, you know, you, I've heard you talk about the new earth as a reality of species that are being eradicated in the 3D on this timeline in this earth are already just fine and dandy in the new earth. And you've, you, I've heard you tell me this. Yes, and that but the new earth much- is a 3D version. I'm not saying we're going to a 5D. The new Earth is a 3D version. We can create heaven in the 3D. Okay, that's, well, that's I'm on board with that. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I think, you know, I feel the same thing. It's like you go to 5D when you drop the physical body and you go into, you know, what is called the astral reality. And that is the... You know, the reality of light and energy. We are not, we are not this, you know, crude matter, luminous beings, are we, right? Like Yoda says in Star Wars, that, you know, that is because we, we drop this dense physical body and that dense physical body has been a manifestation literally brought into reality by the hidden astral form, the, the cerebro spinal centers of, of light and energy, you know, in the inner spine. Uh, and, you know, I've heard it described that when people die, it's like, oh, there's the tunnel and there's the light and there was the sound. And that that tunnel is literally a manifestation of your consciousness moving up through the tunnel of the spine and cerebrospinal centers, the chakras, towards the light of the spiritual eye at the Kutasta Chaitanya, as they say in India, the the Christ consciousness center, the spiritual eye. That's the light that you're moving toward. And there's this rumbling sound of, of your consciousness literally leaving behind this dense physical manifestation of the physical body as you move through the tunnel of light um, of of your inner spine towards the light of the spiritual eye. That's you know that that's a pretty plausible explanation to me. Um, so well, well, let's talk about this a little bit because I would love to hear your um, understanding. Of, okay, so if the new Earth is a physical. Well, let me let me let me, yeah, let me just let, let, just, if I could just one real quick thing I want to I'm going to bring in to ask you about here, um, which is that like. Some people aren't ready, and some people are. The collective consciousness is going to determine which timeline we go down, you know. And it's like you hear a lot of talk about humanity is separating out into two levels of consciousness, two different timelines, and one of them is going to create the new earth. And then those folks who just want to stay mired in a low-density vibration are going to be here with a remnant of Gaia's shell. And meanwhile... There's a new earth, 3D new earth, that the folks who want to move up and are ready to do it will 
will find themselves living in. Does that what resonates for you? What, how are you seeing this? Okay, let me let me just say that the thing that bothered me about this ascension concept that we're going to just ascend into these other levels, right? Um, is I wouldn't move out of a house without cleaning it when I left. Okay, it's, I just couldn't imagine just leaving the place. You know, that's not that's not me. So if it's not me, then let's look at it at what our alternatives are. Our alternatives are to understand that there are dimensions that we've got dimensions, and that this reality, the matrix reality, has been the dominant reality. But that's because people believed that that was the only reality. When you begin to understand you've got a new number of different versions of yourself, the timeline, anytime you come to a, a, you know, a decision in your life, you think about one way and then you think about the other way. And then you go one way. The other way doesn't have your thoughts involved in it, so it just fades away. All right. right. So that to me is the way that timelines work. So if you look at it from where we're at now, yes, we have a new reality. Now, all you need to get a, a reality is an understanding that you can get the reality. And it starts with Buckminster Fuller saying, why would you try to change an existing reality that's working well? The matrix is working, is, it was constructed. Con- constructed to control and is doing a very good job why are you going to change that just build yourself a new reality and build it better than that reality and everybody will leave that reality to come to yours that was buckminster fuller so walt and i and and buckminster fuller is a scientist he's he's a philosopher he's he's like us he's he's probably the god the you know godfather of the enterology concept um the merging of the two but he He's, he, Walt says this to me, tells me what Fuller said. And I said, so, okay, I'll go along with that. I said, okay, here, I see this piece of, of unused space and place and time, okay? I said, so let's just take this place that nobody's mucking with and we'll build a new reality. And it, it, that started in uh, late, late 14 and early 15 and it went for... Uh, I, I don't think it made a year, but it was quite long. Where we every show we would uh, put in a talk about a new energy that we have put into our reality, because we said, okay, if you're going to build a reality, then let's figure out what kind of energies we want in it. We understand that energy is everything, you know. So, and we and he builds energy devices, you know. So the first one that went in was the pink rose, and it's a little spiral. And it's in the frequency of the pink rose. And then I would take that and I would put it into a, a, a crystal computer system, okay, that ends up with this huge cube that's just the most powerful device I've ever experienced that's sitting in the art. And this was a construct of Walt and I saying, how do you harness creation in a way that, we can explain it because you always have to be able to have a story. So this is a story that we got. We're going to make a device called the cube that's going to lock in the frequencies that we're going to put in it. And that cube is going to formulate like uh, uh, the uh, superstructure of the new reality, the superstructure, the energy that we want in this new reality. That was the basic you know, theory behind it. And we go and we proceed to do this. And we talked about them. There was love. There was empathy. There was compassion. There was peace. There was, I, I mean, some of them were like, I don't even remember all of them, you know, because I've got a pile of them. i got a, a pile of these <laughs> spirals that he would make me. And every week we would, well, it wasn't every week. Sometimes they'd have, a, we, we, they wanted to work on one particular frequency for quite a long time. Like, you know, two weeks, I think, was, was the outside. Um, but basically, we just kept doing this, and then um, and then it, we, we didn't have any more to put in it. It took, like I say, I don't think it was quite a year. And I, you know, jeez, I hope I find that book that's got the notes in it. I hope he took notes. Um, so 
we got this new reality that we have theoretically just created out of our thoughts. And that doesn't mean that that is... It, it, what, what happens is that you get other people talking about a new reality, a new earth. And uh, Dolores Cannon was very influential in this. She began to talk about there's a new earth. And so if she's putting that energy into it, and then along comes me and Walt, you know. Well, you know, we have a, t- a radio show that's called S- Reality Sci-Fi. We would just m- use our imagination to create storylines. Now, I said to him just yesterday, I said, maybe we should stop doing some of this because it's coming true. I mean, like, really coming true. Like, I did <clears throat> I did a remote view on uh, when we were dealing with the Archon situation and I ended up in a very peculiar strange place and there were all these heads, just heads first I thought they were human bodies but no, they were just heads all circuited in to this machine and I mean, oh my god you know. so I mean, because I said that, you know, way back in 15, 16 you know, and all of a sudden I'm here in uh, uh uh, Bobby Vaughn talking about that they're doing this, you know. I'm like, wait a minute, reality is because I mean, you know, real, sci-fi is becoming reality, you know, because we're doing this because we're putting yeah. an energy into a storyline. We don't know. This is the key: is that we don't know. But I do know that you can't, you can't predict a future. You can only make a future, and the only way you can make a really new future is to use your imagination. And if you're not willing to go out there and take a chance on telling a story that sounds absolutely insane, but that over 40-some years of doing this, I can tell you, magic is the manipulation of energy. And the begins in your mind. If you can imagine it, it can happen. If you can't imagine it, it will not happen. Yeah, and the energy of human consciousness is, you know, guided and inspired by story it you know it comes back to the story as you say you know what story do you want to live what story do you want to tell what story do you want to imagine what story do you want to create uh, as a reality and you know again i and i realize i'm sort of on a game of thrones jag here but um you know what the ultimate denouement resolution of that whole storyline that millions of people were tuning into right so you know so there's the big war and the the brother betrays the sister and the sister tries to kill the brother and then the the lover turns out that his his lover turns out to be his aunt and then his aunt goes crazy and burns the city and kills a million people and then wants to turn against his own Family and he's like, oh my god! Now I've got to kill my lover, who turns out to be my aunt, and uh, and he stabs her to death. And then he is a hero, but he's a hero who's committed this horrible crime, and his his sister aunt's you know army wants to kill him. Anyway, it comes down to the powerful people getting together for a council again. Okay, the war is over, but now. The guy who was going to be the king has killed the lover who was his queen, and we've got another huge war ready to happen if we don't finally get our frickin' act together. And so the little dwarf guy comes out, you know, Tyrion Lannister comes out and he says, what moves people? What is, what unites people? Is it flags? Is it armies? Is it gold? No. It's stories. There's nothing more powerful than a good story. No army can defeat it. No enemy can overcome it. And who has a better story? And then he turns to, you know, Bran the Broken, this the crippled kid who got shoved out of the window at the beginning of the series and who became a wizard, became a metaphysician, was able to embody within himself the memory of the entire, um, the entire kingdom and everybody in it. And so, you know, this is what fascinates me. I mean, I'm a storyteller by nature and profession, and and it all comes down to the storyline, the timeline. And I remember you told me once that you experienced that 
and this may get too personal for you, so if you don't want to touch it, don't touch it, but that um, you were asked one night in the middle of the night by some guides and angels, it's like, hey, Nancy, um, we need you to jump over to this other timeline because it's going really badly, and we need you to jump timelines. I know you're on a you're on a, time, a happy timeline that works for you, but guess what? Over on this other timeline, things are going badly, and we need you to somehow. And this is a very strange metaphysical trick and puzzle to me. And I was like, oh, okay, switch timelines, right? So while let me take out my metaphysical manual here. Let's see, switch timelines uh, method. Oh, yeah, steps one, two, and three. Okay, here we go. I'm switching timelines now. I mean, do you want to go into that? Yeah, I'll, How I'll did tell that the, I don't know. I don't think I've ever told the story on this show, but it's a fascinating story, and I'm not the only one that understands this. Christia Cumming Slack, who is called the, uh, the uh, angel medium, she's on once a month with me on Say What. She and I both had the same experiences. Um, she could, she, cause, I, okay, in, in the timeline we were on, it, we were on our way to this, this ascension, this change, this, this amazing, you know, evolution into a new reality. We didn't really talk in terms of ascending into the, 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 we just knew that everything was coming together. And there was so much incredible magic. I mean, she and I talk about it. She's not, she's living up in Savannah. I'm living down here in Miami. We got the same stories about that timeline and how wonderful and magical it was. You expected every day to get up and see magic. So there we are. And um, some years before when I had bought, originally bought this property and was doing renovation in it, there was a wooden sphere found in between the, the wood that holds up the, the frame and the stucco. And it was this weird thing. It was like a globe, like, you know, a circle, sphere. And there was like these talions, like holding the sphere. And when the guy found it and he came, I was in the kitchen. And all of a sudden, I, I didn't even, I, I could, maybe I heard him coming, I don't know. But what my reaction was, was as soon as he turned the corner, I backed up until I couldn't back up any further. And I said, what do you, what do you got? And I felt real intense energy. I, won't, I don't know that it was evil, but it was not what I want. I, I mean, it was, it was overpowering. Um, well, to make a long story short, uh, we go into the future, into 2000. And I was by myself at Christmas time. It was in the middle of the day. And all of a sudden, I get the, go, the guide saying, go find that. And I don't even know where it was. I'd put it someplace and, you know, kind of contained it. And I said, all right, what are we doing? You know, okay. So, I mean, I, I've i learned to follow directions. So I go and I get it. And uh, they said, make a fire. So I make a fire in a little, you know, uh, terracotta kind of uh, fireplace. And they want me to burn this thing, okay? But <laughs> I'm going like, whatever, you know. And I'm going to go burn it. Now, this was Christmas, like Christmas Day. And I'm I'm going to burn it, and I, I'm ready to do this. And then they said, now, this is the thing, is that you have to switch timelines. That, you know, this is, a, this is like a ceremonial thingy to, you know, you're committing to do a timeline change because you have to have a story. You got to have a storyline to this, right? So um, I'm going like, what do you mean a timeline? I, I'd never thought about it, never thought timelines at all. And they said there is a really screwed up timeline, and um, you know we, we're asking you to go there and fix it. And I said, well, I said, am I going to succeed? Yes. Will I save everybody? Yes. Okay. Now, I I, I, I don't think they actually lied to me on the last one. I'm still thinking everybody's going to get saved, but you know they might they they might have had a lot of like, well, we're going to save everyone. What do you mean by everyone? You know, I know enough about you yeah, know, questions. Everyone, that's a lot of people, that's a that's lot of people, everybody. right? You know, but that was me, and that was their answer. So I said okay, and I threw this thing into the fire, and then all hell broke loose. I mean, almost within hours of it, things started to get weird. And Christine in your said, life, just yeah, like and, in and your and life. All of a sudden, there's you know all these terrible things. I mean, nine eleven was nine months later. 
you know. Um, yeah. And when you were talking about the wall, you know, and you were so full of details last week when you were talking about the Berlin Wall coming down, you were so detailed about what happened. And I'm sitting there listening to you, and I'm going like, I, why was I not paying attention? I could not have t- talked in detail like you did. And yet this was, you know, what I had studied most of my life. Why yeah. why was I not paying attention? It was cuz I was on a different timeline. I mean, oh, it, yeah, yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah, there see now we got the the Warsaw Pact come down and there with a threat of w- nuclear wars come down and all this really great stuff, but it wasn't drama. It was just more, you know, yeah, that's what's happening. Everything's changing. It's going to be nice. We're going to, you know, do all this. And we're going to get it together. Blah, 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 you know, and then all of a sudden, boom, we get 9-11. We get war with Iraq. We get the Patriot Act. We got, I mean, it's just like, and, you know, and even, well, I mean, I lost all my friends, all my associates. They just kind of faded away. All the ceremonies. After you jumped the timeline? Oh, yeah. All after the cer- cer- Yeah, after I jumped. You know, the ceremony, one by one, and you don't real. I mean, I didn't know what they were talking about when they said jump to another timeline, you know. So, I and I kind of like put that whole thing in the background because I got so involved in the drama. I turned my television on for the first time in I don't know how many years, 30 years or something, and began to watch the news eight hours a day at least, you know. Yeah. Um, it, it was like a complete change, a complete change. In my life, I was a I was the center of a metaphor. I've got an acre of land. We had, we had the the native Miccosukee Indians. The, their shaman, you know, a major Native American shaman came to this property, and he he looked me in the face and he said, "What do you have to teach me?" You know, I mean, it was like I had I had a, a Taos Indian uh, shaman come to this property. I mean, it was like. Ooh, magic was happening all the time, and then boom, gone. <laughs> mm, and so this was, um, this happened. Two thousand. It sounds like you're saying at the beginning of 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 two thousand one. Yeah, it was. It was actually the Christmas two thousand. So New Year's was two thousand. Right. So, yeah, because nine eleven was nine months later. Right. Right. Okay. Wow. You know. So. I've been very much aware of, you know, because, and and did Christia go through, you know, dis, I said, Christia, I said, probably millions of us jumped. I said, I was gifted with, because I'm a, the great storyteller, I was gifted with a story as to what happened and, you know, why it happened. But, you know, so much, and she said, I'm telling you, she's, we've had, over the years we've discussed, we were talking about it again you know, this last show, because what we're feeling energetically is a movement more and more towards the same energy that we felt on the original timeline. And I said to her, I said, look, if we had stayed on that timeline, the Lottie Dottie, everything is a wonderful thing, we would, there was a merging, we're in a state of merging, it's like all those threads that are in the, in the strings that are in the rope, that make up the rope. You know, they're 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 now all merging. They're coming together. They're losing different the the very little things that might be different on each of the timelines. They're all everybody's starting to focus on on one kind of energy, and that energy is very similar, probably identical to the timeline that we were on to begin with. So if if we had gotten hit without being on the timeline of destruction, you know. We wouldn't have been prepared for it. I don't think we would have made, mm. made the jump. You know, that we have to take care of the timeline where, see, we're focusing, humanity is focusing on that first original timeline. But we got this Lucifer devil AI, whatever it is, the Borg, you know, that are at play that we had no concept was that was at play in the original timeline. But now we do. And yeah. now we're working, you know, actually working to dispel their influence in our reality. Well, that's the big challenge, isn't it? You know, dispelling their influence is about focusing on the timeline of of hope and freedom and creativity and 
uh, healing and empathy and compassion and, and new solutions, new well, systems that are decentralized and aren't about top down control. It's, you know, and when you look at the fear factor that's out there right now, my gosh, what a challenge. Walt Silva said something to me once that just like blew my t- blew my mind. He said, "You know, we were talking about the secret space program, and for those of you that do not understand the secret space program, it's something that I lived through because back in the '60s there was now remember we're without the internet, okay? But back in the '60s there was this." reporting going on that actually was reported in the mainstream media which was you know your news that's how you got it at the time about thousands of people who were disappearing and they were high level scientists for the most part and they were there was reports in Britain there was reports in the United States all over the world all of a sudden people started realizing that You know, it wasn't just Uncle Bob. It was Uncle Bob and, you know, all these other people that disappeared at the same time. And, of course, think about it. You don't have the Internet, you know. And it it blew up and then it died off. But we know that it happened. Oh, let me understand. Let me me understand. So it blew up and it died off. What, there was a disappearance? No, yeah, a news thing. You know how the news focuses on something and then it's sort of like, oh, yeah, never mind, and it fades away. Right, like 500 people being killed in Las Vegas by one guy in a, in a, from a window. That right. story just yeah, disappears. Yeah, it just, just disappears, right? Well, that's what happened with that story. But we knew the story. So for those people that were alive and aware and got the message and – you know, I get the message. I get the message. You know, you need to know this and you need to know that. Okay, remember that. Remember that. Okay. You know, so now when I start hearing about the secret, secret space program, I'm going like, well, this is really peculiar because that answers where all those people went. All right. Now, there was a, I love what, when we talk about, you know, uh, because it's all one story, but there was a TV show that was about a group of people who thought they were on a a spaceship that had left Earth because Earth was being destroyed, and they're on their way to someplace else, And but they're on the spaceship. They don't know that they're still parked on the surface of the Earth. Do you remember that, that show? No, it's a fascinating idea, Oh, my though. God. It was, it, but it didn't last very long. It was like, I think, yeah. maybe six, seven, eight, maybe episodes, and then it just disappeared. And sometimes okay. I think, did I see this and nobody else saw it? No, it's, it's a real yeah, show. Yeah, it was a special Nancy Hopkins multidimensional <laughs> reality you saw show. <laughs> right. I, well, hold, let me understand. So how does the speaker space program make people disappear? I'm not getting that. Well, because they needed they, – okay, they, they were building a, a, the Space Force. Okay, and they needed people that could build it. So they were going to individuals and essentially saying, you know, how would you like to join a group of people that are building this amazing new Star Trek world? And so it's not like they were abducting them. I don't know if they were abducting or not. Maybe they were because it, it, in that same time frame, they were able to essentially teleport people off you know, out of their houses, then have a conversation with them. Do you want to go to the stars or do you want to stay on Earth? Oh, I want to go to the stars. Okay, you're with us. You want to go to Earth? Okay, put them right back where they were and race their minds so they never remember it. This is technology that exists. I, I can, right. It absolutely exists. Um, so if you have a situation where you're needing all of these people you know you can you can just get them in there now i've heard from different now this now how do we know about the secret space program because people have come out and told stories about it um uh trying to think of what what their names are right now uh wilcox but, friend um right Corey good curry good uh, Corey good <coughs> and then there's um bill Randy, well, Randy Kramer, 
you know, and, okay. there, and there's been a few others. Um, uh, Bellick, um, Al Bellick, he was the, right. the, 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 you get, you get into the, um, concept of the uh, Montauk project. I mean, there are so many layers and ways of looking at, you know, well, where's the proof of this? How did it happen? The story is all, all there. So you got this, this ability now to go into space. To, and you, you're working with ETs. You've got ETs working with you. Every government in the world that's any government, the Russians, the Chinese, everybody's involved in it. But you don't tell anybody on the planet. You know, you keep well, this sure, secret. Cause if, yeah, because if you tell them, then you have to admit you've been keeping all kinds of secrets. Yeah, Roswell is real. Well, yeah, okay, government lies are real. Okay, well, yes, there's this military industrial thing, like Eisenhower warned us that's real. And okay, well, yeah false flags they've been going on for centuries and okay well there was the Lusitania and okay well Operation Northwoods and well yeah 9-11 you, you know you open that door and all of a sudden all of their power gets exposed their agenda and their values are exposed and it's torches and pitchforks time and when you talk about oh you get recruited into the secret space program and, you know, teleport it up to some nice spaceship and do you want to go to the stars? Oh, you don't? Okay. We're just going to, you know, look into this little device and poof, like on, you know, Men in Black, your memory's erased and back down you go. Well, I don't know. That sounds a little bit too touchy-feely friendly uh, compared to what, you know, the people controlling this thing are likely to do, that there's that if you have certain skills and knowledge they absolutely need, guess what? Uh, okay, what do we have to do? Do we have to threaten your family? Do we have to threaten your life? Do we have to just tell you you don't have a choice? You know, um, I'm, I'm actually thinking of someone that Maya, um, several decades ago, was working closely with, L. George Lawrence. He was the inventor of the first laser engine. And he was also working closely with her on her quantum realm science that she was receiving. Um, from her inner planes mentor, and he was validating it on a scientific level. They were corresponding closely. He was really close friends with Maya and her mother. Uh, this is like back in the late 70s. Um, and then he just disappeared. Uh, no more contact, no follow through. They kept writing to where he was, and it was as if he dropped off the face of the earth. And this is in like mid conversation of, of deep, you know, friendship and exchange and even a little romantic interest. Um, but not, you know, that wasn't what it was about. That was not like an interfering factor. It was just a, you know, part of it in the air shared dreams. They would have, you know, identical dreams that would happen. And then this guy just disappeared and, you know, deeply tied into, you know, highly advanced technology with potential military applications and he just vanishes. And she and her mother were, you know, this is pre-internet. And she and her mother were, you know, very disappointed and saddened. And we never heard back from him. Well, years later, you know, the internet comes around. And it's like, hey, well, let's do a search on George. What happened to him? Well, lo and behold, this his intellectual and scientific output stopped from the date when they lost touch with him. But the Google search has him living another, you know, 15, 20 years. He's passed away now. Um, but he, his science was getting into territories where it was either he was going to stop doing it as independent research or because he knew there was, you know, high-level government interest or he was going to do it on board with them. And it sounds like, you know, potentially, theoretically, hypothetically, just exactly the kind of person who would be approached to be recruited, but really, you know, you don't really have the option to just go back to to Earth with a little memory erase of this episode. Uh, you're coming. Anyway, just, you know, my storyteller well, instinct well, is telling me that that probably happened a fair amount. Yeah. Um, so one day, Walt says to me, we were talking about this. All right, what is the secret space program? They they have. I mean, I'm not going to get into the details of it, but they actually seem to have 
at least three layers of it. You know, the American Air Force is involved in in one layer with the Navy with, you know, a certain other, just like branches that we have, right? And then you have, um, it, it, it's, it's, it exists, but the details of it, I, I, I don't know enough about, there's not enough data for me to make a determination as to what all is happening, except that there's many layers of it. Um, and there's ETs involved in it, of course. They are able, to the best of my knowledge, to go anywhere in the solar system. But because of laws and restrictions over human beings being dangerous, <laughs> you know, um, the Galactic Federation is saying, you guys just play in your little solar system there for a while. I don't believe that they're doing warp dr- jumps or hyperdriving or any of that. They're just, you know, uh, the beginning of the space trek uh, kind of world. So they have replicator. Based on hemp oil, by the way. <clears throat> you can get anything you want out of it. Okay, so what, what what he said to me was, he said, okay, so while they're building this secret space program and not telling anybody on Earth, he said, the ones they left behind, us, we're becoming the Q continuum. Now, that's a really interesting Star Trek reference because the Q continuum was a group of humans that actually developed and had godlike capabilities. And it's a sub-story line that they've used throughout the different Star Trek things. But in reality, they were trying to kind of ignore us, like, you know, ignore the animals in the pasture, and then all of a sudden they there started to be you know, things happening that now, oh, wait a minute, We may, maybe we want to pay attention to them because they seem to be getting, they're seeming to wake up. You know, all of a sudden the cow starts talking to you, that type of thing. So now they've got to put their focus back on, on controlling that because they know. See, it, it, the, you got the space people, they're doing their thing and everything, but the people that are trying to control everything, the really dark side that we've been talking about, Okay, they realize that if human beings wake up to their own potential, they're going to change everything. There is no button. There is right. nothing, there is no known force that can control a human being that is fully in their own potential. And so now they've got to turn around and try to keep us quiet, get us, you know, brain dead. But the reality yeah. is, is that we are turning into our own potential. And, you know, that's why you have the rushing of the 5G. And, oh, my God, that, you know, it was like, you know, Yoda, or who was that, said that, you know, as you're crushing, as you're, 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 you're putting your pressure, all these things are getting away from you. And all those things are us, the people that are awakening. And you squeeze and somebody else awakens, you know. So then they try the, the virus thing and all this other stuff. Okay, if if... If it, it's a correct story, if there's a true timeline where there is a secret space program, then as a military intelligence officer, I'm making the assumption that there is that, okay? Now, looking at it, what am I seeing? Well, I'm seeing that the President of the United States initiated a new branch of the military called the Space Force. He makes a flag... And the flag indicating, you know, the flag of the Space Force has got the emblem of Star Trek on it. (laughs) Right. Okay? They have an Air Force advertisement up on YouTube that says, maybe your destiny is in the stars, not Earth. Okay? Then they have all over the world reports and video of orbs you know, I mean, they, 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 I've seen like a dozen or so was the first ones coming out. Well, the last orb shot that, you know, where you have all these orbs, there were over 50 of them over California. It ended up on Fox News. That's where I saw it, on Fox News. Right. Okay? Well, you always have to ask yourself, like, whose Space Force is that? Which alien faction is that? Well, I don't is think it's it alien. Is it faction or is it, are these light orbs like they see around the creation of, of crop circles? These light orbs are seen right before the crop circle just goes boom and suddenly there well, it that, is. Well, that's your decision. Which, which storyline do you want to tell? 
because you now are awakened to the fact that they're going to they're about to tell you about this. Okay, now so they're setting the stage. Okay, they're making us. I mean, when he came out with the space force, people were like, "What is he crazy?" Or how? You know. And now, oh, it's the space force, and that's the logo. To oh, and they're advertising for people to join the space force. And oh, and, and look at all these things that are happening in the sky. Okay, but <laughs> when they do a demonstration over Miami, you know, like what? Ten miles from where I where I'm sitting right now. And I'm sitting on a piece of property that is a very, very powerful piece of property. You know, this is is the magic city. They call it the magic city. Over Miami, you take and you have a video, not one, I think there's a couple of them, but a video of this bright light and popping out of this bright light is... These other lights, until you've got, like, I think there was five of them. And then, one by one, they just, toot, 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 toot. You know, I mean, and it's it, it was like, what am I looking at? Boom. Oh, my God. And what I was looking at was this huge <laughs> aircraft type of, I mean, aircraft carrier like we'd have in the ocean. But this was for spacecraft. And the big white light was a demonstration of the big ship, the the you know the space an aircraft carrier, you know, but a spacecraft carrier. And this big white light was that. And these other things popping off of it were spacecraft flying off of it. This to me was you know I mean I can't you know I'm a remote viewer. I don't yes I could be making all this up in my head, but I'm hell of a good creator then. But when I said, what is this? All of a sudden, that's what I saw. Okay? And then, okay. you know, so my feeling is that if, if, I, if I was to be a betting person, I would pay a lot of attention to what's happening over Mount Rushmore on Saturday. Because this coming Saturday. This coming Saturday. Because they're going to have, well, it's actually Friday. It's on the 3rd. They're going to um, have this big, big, big ceremony thing, Fourth of July ceremony in Rushmore that they haven't had in 10 years because of environmental problems. And the, you know, the never Trump people are screaming and hollering, oh my God, he's going, because he's going to be there. And, you know, oh no, this can't do this. Plague, the plague. Oh my God, the plague, the plague. And, um, Trump keeps saying, oh, yeah, we're going to have a, a really impressive flyover. And a flyover is when you have aircraft fly over an event, like in right. the Super Bowl. And the the governor, the governor of um, the state was talking to one of the Fox people. And she was like, look it, we don't have any plague here. And she was given the statistics. It's very, it's, it's, you know, very, very small. And we are proud to do this. We are, we are proud Americans. Who, and she went into this, you know, doing the, 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 bringing out the emotion of the patriot in me. You know, this is, a, this is something that the patriots are doing. And it was Hannity, actually, because Hannity said, I've been there, and you know what, North Dakota? I'm going to go back there. Maybe I'll, because I'm leaving New York. Hannity has, has said, I'm out of here. And, you know, he says, I need some place to go. And she said, please come here. And, you know, this is the this is the America that you you know. And uh, so, yeah, I you know, I will be very disappointed if they don't have some very unique aircraft fly over Rushmore. On well, hopefully they'll yeah, and it'll be on a million cell phones that are doing videos, and it'll be all over the web, and maybe Fox will cover it. Uh, but you know, the question is going to arise, uh, and I guess the timeline question: which story? Which, which timeline? Which story do you want you know, to believe? Because, well, it's not so much which story I personally want to believe. I mean, there which, is the you want to see? Do you want to see? Well, I want to see. Okay, so is Michael Don all by his lonesome? Say, I drive up to Dakota to Rushmore on Saturday because I want to see this. And whether I believe 
that these are good guy uh, UFOs or whether it's the you know reverse engineered cabal version being utilized for a planned fake alien invasion as the next big martial law excuse or it's you know the good happy loving freedom encouraging ETs who are working with the white hats and Q and JFK Jr. and everybody else and everything's all happy whether I believe option one or option two is not going to determine whether option one or option two is true I happen to believe still and there's a thing you know called actual linear reality yes collective consciousness creates it but I ain't going to create it all by my lonesome and I'm going to be wondering which one it is because um, I don't necessarily you know trust this idea of um, the space force as part of disclosure as part of, oh my God, we got the pandemic, we got the riots, uh, never mind about 5G, and guess what, kids? Turns out that uh, aliens are a reality, and, well, there's a real bad faction coming at us, and now we got no choice but martial law, do we? So just line up for your vaccines, and we're just so sorry that depopulation ended up happening because of these nasty ETs. I mean, you know... Uh, you well, know it's I up to like you. It. You can engage in it and you can it's say, not, look, and I want to believe. Me. It is not up to me. It Which is do you think up is to real? you. It's up to every person. Not per- Michael Dunn. Well, Which do you they, think is real, Nancy? Look, at, if, it, if you say you're not involved in it, then you're not a player. The people that are listening to me and understand this uh, know that y- y- we are making up the story. If you're so stuck in linear science that you can't understand the full concept of co-creation, then I put forth to you, my story with the Patriots and the plan has a hell of a lot better ending than any other story I've heard. And if I'm going to go through life, I'm going to commit myself to a story that has a good ending. If you want to sit there and say that the real story is the linear, the 3D, what? no, it's energy. And I can control and manipulate energy and demonstrate magic. I've been doing it all my life. I I know the power. Okay, I I am totally on board with that. I am, you know, I mean, listen to me the last year and a half. That's all I've been talking about, too. And at the same time... You know, I'm walking into a county commissioner's meeting in Taos and what's happening on the 3D level that is a result of the quantum reality. I can see the consciousnesses of the majority of the people in that room creating the reality. I just got to make a tactical decision, a strategic, whatever you want to go in, you know, the military mindset on this. Okay, in the quantum reality... What are the consequences manifesting in front of me right now? And how do I move towards the good storyline? I mean, it's, it's a challenge. You know, it's like walking the line of moving with the reality of quantum and neurology, collective consciousness, creating your own reality, co-creating with the divine and saying, okay, and strategically, I'm looking around in Colorado I'm looking around in the San Luis Valley where I'm talking to you from right now and saying, I see certain factions and groups operating this way. They're creating this reality. It is in my face. So how do I and my friends move towards the solution reality, move with Buckminster Fuller's, you know, we're creating a new solution. And yeah, the more we do that, the more that's the world we're going to live in, the more we're going to co-create it. And I'm just trying to, you know, okay, in the meantime, I'm on the 3D level where I've got to protect my community from the consequences I see out there. I'm well, you, you, you have fun playing in that reality. Um, we're actually, wait a minute, why does it say 55? Now, come on, give me a little respect here. I mean, we're in the same No, 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 here. I'm running out of time. I'm running out of time here. It's, I'm looking at the clock and I'm looking at how much time. We're at 12 p.m. It's no 12 noon or 2 p.m. your time. Right. Right, right, right. I just don't understand why it says 55 minutes. Different timeline. That's very strange. Um, yeah, you, you, I mean, you know, my thing is is that it, I'm going to put out a story that I think is a good story. 
I don't care whether you believe it or not. If you don't believe it, then you have no energy in my story. If I get enough people to believe my story, then that's what's going to happen. Because that's where I come from as a, somebody that has been studying energy for a very long time. I understand, appreciate the power of the human thought and contention. If you're deciding that you want to deal at the 3D level, then you're dealing with a drama of the 3D. And it's not really going to be much of a manifester. But, you know, have fun if you want it. I mean, everybody's got free will here. I'm just putting hey, come out a story. On. Come on. Are you talking you generally or are you talking to Michael? I'm talking to you. I'm okay, saying, well, that's I'm, not what I'm, I'm saying. saying. I'm, that is not what I'm saying here. I, you know, put me no Mr. 3D, no vision, no co-creation. That is not what I am saying. It's not where I come from. Well, that's what I understood you to just have said. N- no. Well, maybe I didn't say it very well. You know, but ask no, Lenny. You know. What did he? What did I say, Lenny? <laughs> uh, Lenny's and not Lenny's, here. Oh dear! Oh dear! Yeah, uh, no, no. You know, I'm. I mean, I'm. I've been spending most of my time for the last few years, and certainly on this show, you know, sharing about the power of creating the new timeline, of creating story, of creating co-creating a new reality. Um, you know, and staying out of the dark timeline, staying out of buying into the domination and the fear and the lower vibration. That's you know, that's pretty much what my whole work in life has been about. So, you know, all I'm talking about is, um, you know, on this show we do a lot of talking about geopolitical reality, political reality, what's Trump doing, what's this faction doing, and then looking, stepping back, looking at the bigger spiritual picture. And I love that, that we go back and forth on that. And so I was just touching on, hey, what I'd love to know what the actual tactical, military, geopolitical reality is behind whatever's going to go on at Mount Rushmore on Saturday. That's all. It's a fascinating part of the new story. What's really going on there? You know? So that's all. Anyway, oh, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I was trying to do something here on the other computer and for some reason I have a problem this is interesting okay I'm not sure what's happening um, alright so uh, yeah no I'm saying that you know it's just a story but we'll know by Friday you know whether something really happens at Rushmore or not I mean last year yeah. they were talking about a very similar thing bringing out John Kennedy Jr. and blah 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 but um, that's part of, of you know it's just we're story. We're here to entertain. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> just here I do. entertaining. There uh, you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so okay, so we're wrapping up. Yeah. All right. Well, this has been Radio Five G. Thanks for um, being with us, everybody. And it's a joint project of Cosmic Reality Radio and the Sacred Academy of Global Evolution. Um, love to you all love to you Nancy and see you next week right yeah yeah well yeah assuming <laughs> assuming yeah all uh, right be well you have God a good bless. day have a good week we'll you see too. you next time bye bye yeah alrighty bye bye thank you for listening may it be oh, let it